Welcome to the Ink Paul Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Crystal, and I forget which part we're at here, but we're continuing on this uh, Batman painting. So today we're going to go through our initial wash, and this is what sort of sets the lighting and color scheme for me. Uh, more on that in a second. Um, first, can I say um anymore? I can, and I probably will. Please forgive me. First thing I'm going to do is tape this Batman down. Uh, just using a Dick Blick artist tape. And the purpose of taping this down for me is I like to make sure I'm painting on a flat surface, not a buckled surface. And this helps me maintain a flat surface. So I just try to go up to the border. It also really makes for a nice border when you're done and you peel the paint off, you peel the tape off after the painting is all done. And um, you've got this nice crispish border. Some of the wash will seep through in certain areas, but not everywhere. And uh, I like to think of art as something you're gonna frame one day. And that helps with the matte cutting. So. What this will basically do, like I said, is prevent the buckling, prevent it from lifting. I mean, it'll buckle a little bit, but it'll help when it dries that it, it dries flat again. And it's really during this first phase that the the buckling is, is an issue because you're laying down so much water. So let me get that going. Okay. And normally I like to do two layers just to get that super grip down. And I make the second layer just a little lower away from the edge of the, the image. And um, okay. So almost there. Make sure you press down all the edges well and you'll see that, that when they, um, paint, the tape gets wet it'll lift in certain areas so the better you can sort of get that adhesive sticking in place the better off you are. And this is a small little painting which I've been enjoying because it allows me to play with color and uh, it gives some of my fans an opportunity to own a piece of original art that isn't like astronomical but there, it's still a painting it's still a process and it's still pretty damn valuable so here's batman taped down so the next thing i'm going to do is push batman aside and let's look at my little paint tray here i've got two metal cups for my washes i've got two cups of water for the different color washes and i'm using alpha acrylic paints which i love uh, they're awesome. They're great pigments. Alpha acrylic. Alpha acrylic. Uh, great pigments. Uh, they lay down well. These are, I mean, like these are small bottles. They sell them bigger, but I don't need them bigger. I, I use these mainly in wash format. Uh, if you go into my description down, just down below, right down there, you'll see a link. And if you use the code that's in that description, right, right there then you can get a discount 10 percent off they sponsor me they sponsor ink pulp instruction and i proudly use their paints so what i'm going to do is see it's like a spray can i got a nice little click a clack of happening i'm going to use this bright orange just a couple of drops and i'm going to use this dark blue and these are complementary colors i'm using and I love to use compliments to lay down the initial wash. You'll see as we go, things are going to change quite dramatically as I add color and build layers, transparent layers. And then when I get to the opaques, you know, and, and my whole thing is I want to make the, the reflective light side of Batman just shine. And, and in my head right now, I'm thinking I'm either going to go with this acid green or this intense magenta. 
um, pink. So I'm not sure which direction I'm going in yet. So what I do is I fill up this little uh, little children's hypodermic thing. It's not an actual needle. And I just fill it up with water and I'm going to squirt about half in on one side and half in on the other. I'm just making a wash. I want these to be fairly transparent, um, but I want some. I do want some color to lay down. So let's get Batman back in place, and I'll show you how I do this. Let me get my brush real quick. Thought I had everything ready to go. And of course, I forgot the brush. Here we go. So the brush I'm going to use today is this synthetic low Cornell with a rounded tip. And the reason I like this brush versus say like a flat or a pointed round is I find it, um, it allows the colors, it pushes the colors more than it sucks up the colors. And it allows for this nice blending to occur. So the very first thing I do is lay down water, a healthy amount of water. Because I want these colors, like I said, to be thin and transparent to explode everywhere. So you'll notice when, if you're doing this, or I hope you're doing this with me, you'll notice that when you do it, the color pencil can resist a little bit of water. Just keep putting the water down on top of it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to try to mix up these paints with the water a bit so I can get that washed appropriately managed. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is lay in some orange. I want the main light source to come down in this direction. So I'm going to put down some orange. It's very thin. I'm just going to keep dabbing that color around and let it kind of explode against what I'm about to do. and that's gonna be the blue. So everywhere else we're gonna get this blue. What a beautiful blue. And then watch where they kind of come in contact with each other. You'll get this nice like blending. It should be like a greenish brown. And that sort of just sets the tone of my piece. I tend to like to lay down a little more pigment because as this dries it really lightens up a good bit. It doesn't, it's not a perfect science. Um, I'll probably put some more, or, well, I'm gonna lay colors on top of it anyway. So that's sort of the gist. Um, as far as cleaning the brush goes, there's a very specific technique I use for that. And if you go to inkpulpinstruction.com, see, there's a link, it's right, it's another link, and it's in the same description. There's so many links. Um, but I have a video I sell on brush care, which I think is essential. It's, it's my process for taking care of brushes. So please check that out. And if you're enjoying this, I mean, I hope your paintings are going well too. Please comment on it. Let me know how it's going for you. And this again, is just kind of like a, it's a small scale. I don't want to say quick and dirty, but I want to say not as labor intensive as um, a larger painting. So I do have an episode on this technique is applied to a larger painting which involves a lot more color choices and a lot more techniques in, in applying the paint. Just go to inkpulpinstruction.com and get yourself that Wonder Woman video where I'm painting Wonder Woman. And um, yeah, thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope your paintings are coming along awesome. Let me know. Let me know what's up. I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>